Well, I, I, I don't know if I'd agree with seven-man rotation. They've got numerous guys that can play. They're playing some young guys. And um, they've got different people that can do different things at different times. So, obviously, we want to bring fatigue to the game. But that's a lot easier said than done. That means we have to be executing. That means we have to be getting stops and getting our break going. So that, that falls on us. But, but uh, if Wisconsin's putting somebody out on the floor, they can play. They always could, and they always have, and, and I'm pretty certain it's going to stay the same with Greg. So to me, um, we've got to do a great job of understanding their personnel, understanding what they want out of, out of their offense, and uh, also understanding what's there defensively because they do a really, really good job uh, of protecting the lane. So th those are the things to us, and then let's see what happens. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. We watched them all, and I have not seen uh, much change at all. But you really wouldn't expect. I'm sure Greg will put, um, you know, his stamp and his wrinkles in. And, um, and but but they they're good. I mean, they're a very good team. I mean, they're Wisconsin, and they've got uh, some guys that have done it at a high level for a long time, like Nigel Hayes and Bronson Koenig. and and uh, Vito Brown is shooting the ball at an incredible rate. His improvement is tremendous. Uh, Ethan Happ is playing at a high level. Zach Showalter is playing at a high level. They're bringing guys off the bench that are young, that are doing really good things. So um, they're tested. They've had some. They've had some tough games. They've had some big games, tough losses, big big wins, and um, and, and and they're very committed to how they play. So I, th I think uh, Greg's doing an excellent job. With That's it. something I did not know. I don't study statistics like you do. Well, then <laughs> Obviously, you guys shoot the ball very well. Against a team like that, how do you make sure that you're not worrying too much about shooting the ball well against a team that maybe struggles? With we, don't, we don't talk about that as much as making sure that our spacing is, is strong, that we're committed to it, that we're finishing our cuts, that we're playing through the paint, whether it's through the drive or through the post-up, especially with, with what, we're, what we can get with Thomas and Max. Um, and, and we have different guys that we can post up. We want to make sure that we're reversing the ball. And um, that, that's the most important stuff. And if you're ready to shoot, knock it down. But if, if, you, if you hold the ball, if you dribble the ball without driving it, if you stay on one side of the floor, if you, uh, you know, over-penetrate and, and people are able to collapse and, and create a turnover on you, then that's obviously very bad. So it's really more about staying really fundamentally sound uh, with making the next pass, staying committed to the spacing, getting the ball reversed, and good things happen when that ball can touch the paint. And if we stay true to that, then I, I and I'm not, then it just, we'll, we'll live with the results of the shots. What you're hearing from OG, um, was there like a unique moment in practice where it kicked in? Because all of a sudden, since the Notre Dame game in particular, he's been very effective. No, I don't think there was. I think it's been a buildup. I think it's always a buildup uh, with the young guys. And I think for him, it's been really learning how to sustain intensity. Um, and, and what that's done is, is allowed him to be more productive in practice. And, and certainly when you start to have confidence in games, it gets even better. But the confidence in games comes from having a confidence in practice of being able to sustain it over a period of time. And I think that's, that's what's happened for him. He works very hard on his game. But um, he, he's been competing, and, he, and, he, and he's getting more comfortable in it. He's getting more comfortable with the speed of it. And, and, and all of a sudden, you know, once you learn to sustain that intensity and play over the fatigue, now you're able to – uh, retain more and and I think that's what happens it all it hits all freshmen at different points in times and and like uh, Thomas Bryan is improving during the games and and especially with ball screen defense the other day now not as much obviously in the Rutgers game because he didn't get the opportunity but in the in the Nebraska game he did now a lot of his is because he's healthier so it's always something uh, for a freshman but it's it's rarely ever that that one moment or those two moments it's really built up over a period of time and that gives you a better chance because they stay that means they're getting more consistent and and um that's what you want what's a what kind of interaction will the 76 guys have with the training guys well i think the way it's scheduled right now uh they're going to be at practice tomorrow and we had todd jadlow at practice today which was really cool and and i don't think he'd been back in a couple of decades so that was great uh great for me to meet him you know, let alone the players. But um, I think they'll be uh, here for that. I know they have a press conference tomorrow, I believe. Certainly, what time is that? It's around 5.30, 5.30. Yeah, so, uh, and then I hope they, they take advantage of coming into the locker room.
so I definitely think there'll be some some time to interact. But the best thing we can do is honor them by playing extremely hard and competitive, playing extremely unselfish, and uh, playing both ends of the floor at a high level. And that's the most important thing. Getting ready to be, I think, or just in turn, yeah. yeah. When, when did that team just first become impactful to you? What did you learn from that team, I guess, growing up? Well, that was a big part of my love for Indiana. Uh, I remember that game vividly. I don't remember the team as much as I remember the championship game. And um, I've said this story before, before you were on the beat, but, but we were in school back in Michigan, and our teacher had said, go home and watch the Michigan Wolverines tonight. And the Michigan Wolverines are playing for the national championship. And, and I'm at home, I get to stay up a little later, uh, and I'm watching the game, sitting in our green shag carpet, and, and it's like, wow. You know, I mean, it just like caught you watching this team play, and I didn't know anything about basketball, but I was, I was, I was captured by the, the candy stripes. Uh, Kent Benson and Scott May became my favorites, and, and uh, then as, as, you, as you learn over a period of time that they had that, that Quinn Buckner and Bobby Wilkerson were two of the best defensive guards that ever played, and then you see what Tom Abernathy does, and, and then you get into coaching and you know what Jim Cruz did, and it's, it's been uh, great. But that was really um, my first huge memory of basketball outside of Central Michigan University, and uh, never forget it. And then the next year uh, in 77 is when Marquette won. So I've always felt from the beginning of time when I got the job here that, that I got a chance to coach at the two places outside of Central where I was from that really uh, just absolutely got me caught up in a love for basketball. And that 76 game, that, that national championship game was a big part of that. I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, I, I, I have no idea. All I know is um, there's no way to put it in context because I wasn't here uh, for it, obviously, and, and really none of us were in the sense that what they had to undertake every day. But Tom Abernathy said something the first year that's always stuck with me and, and would ask that question. And cause, because any time, especially early when we didn't know, you know, Tom Abernathy's with us a lot. You know, he's in the locker room a lot before games when he comes. But one of the first times he was ever here, he spoke to the team and asked him, what was it about that team that made it successful? And he said, it was simple. We always listened to our coach. And I'm sure it wasn't that simple. Right? I'm sure it wasn't that simple. But when you look back at it and you hear what he said, so no matter what, they listened to their coach. They took care of one another. I'm sure they had issues just like anybody else would have, but they handled it. And I think over a period of time, Bob Hamill has done such a great job with some of those books, some of those past books of talking about that. And then you see the oral histories uh, that have been done over a period of time. And it, and it really all comes together. They all believed in, in what they were doing. And no problem, in my mind, no problem was ever big enough to disrupt the team. And, and they listened to their coach to, to, to understand how to win those games. And uh, they must have had an incredible belief in one another over a period of time that was forged through, through successes and adversity. And so I, I don't know if it will ever be done again. And, and whether it is or whether it isn't is, is irrelevant because for 40 years it hasn't been and it stood the test of time and that's a lifetime. So to me, that's pretty impressive. Uh, I, hope, I hope at some point he does. I, I really do. And, and um, I, I know this. I, I don't think anything will ever change. If he does decide, whatever day that is to come back, if he does decide to come back, he will see how revered he absolutely is by everybody that's a part of this program, past, present, and, and with the fans. And I think that's, um, that's the best answer that I can give because um, the last thing you want to do, it, 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 it's, if it ever happens, it would, be, it would be an incredible honor for everybody that's a part of Indiana. And I, and I, and I truly believe that he would see just absolutely how revered what he did here is by the way people still feel about him. And I think that's, that's the most important thing that I could say about that. Sorry, okay. Who's that guy? I, I just got that. I'll go ahead. It's, he's still being evaluated, okay. and literally, right now. And no, he is. He's still being evaluated and, and um, um, uh, going through some testing and things like that. So um, that's, that's where we're at. And, and when, uh, when we come to a... Uh, some type of, uh, uh, I don't want to say decision, but when a decision is made as to what's next, we'll go from there.
Okay.